All right, so let's get started with our presentation. Um, welcome to those of you that may not have seen me in the welcome session. My name is Erin. I am the student recruitment officer at the Vancouver campus. Uh, and the Vancouver campus is located on the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam people, which I am so proud to work on. So what I'm gonna go through today is what your next steps will look like on your journey to coming to UBC Engineering. Many of you may still be waiting for an offer, which is typical for our transfer students. Transfer students, especially those coming into year two, a lot of our offers don't go out until May or June. So I'll we'll cover a lot of upcoming dates and deadlines for you to be aware of, and then hopefully have some time at the end to answer any other questions that you have. So here are some important dates coming up for you to be aware of. Um, whatever your offer letter says in terms of when you need to accept your offer, please make sure to abide by that deadline. So May 1st is typically the deadline for students to accept their offer. However, if you are offered later than May 1st, you'll typically have about two weeks or so to accept that offer of admission. Make sure to do so by whatever deadline is stated in your admission letter. If you are an international student, as soon as you get that offer of admission, we do highly recommend starting to apply for your study permit, as that will be a requirement for coming to UBC Engineering. It can take some time to get that study permit all approved and finalized and everything. So as soon as you're able to start that application process, we really recommend that you do so. Depending on your particular situation or where you are coming from, so whether you're a Canadian, whether you're a U.S. applicant, whether you're an international applicant, there are lots of different dates that may apply to you. Checking your student service center is going to be the best spot to see what dates are relevant to you, but here are some on the screen right here that you can kind of get a sense of. As mentioned, most of our offers for transfer students don't go out until May and June, so those offers do go out a little bit later. Um, so just because you don't have an offer yet does not mean that you won't get one. A lot of our offers do not go out until May and June. Do make sure that you are submitting your final transcripts by that deadline specified to you. You should already have had an email uh, if you uh, had applied and we've assessed your uh, application saying anything else that you need to provide at this point in time, but make sure that you're also meeting those final uh, deadlines for your final official transcripts to be sent from your issuing institution to UBC. May 15th is also the deadline to uh, submit your second year placement form. You do not have to have been admitted to submit that form. So we'll talk a little bit more about that soon, but you can submit that form if you think that you're going to be admitted. We encourage students to submit that form by May 15th, regardless of your admission status. Uh, you will find out which program you're placed into, typically in late June, about a week or two before that July 5th to 7th date, which is when second year course registration happens. If you are applying for student loans, make sure that you are applying by July 25th is the deadline for Canadian students usually. The first day of classes will be September 5th. Classes those days are typically can canceled for Imagine Day. Uh, and then your first tuition payment is likely due on September 6th. So speaking about finances, let's talk a little bit more about money. So a little bit of a breakdown of what your fees and things will look like. Do make sure, excuse me, do make sure that you are um, following any of those dates and those deadlines that apply to you. Any scholarship uh offers that are going out to students. There aren't too many for transfer students, but we do have some. Those will all be sent out by the end of April. Again, May 1st is typically the deadline to accept your offer of admission. You also need to pay your tuition deposit at that point. That is $500 for Canadian and permanent resident students and $1,000 for students on a study permit. Uh, and then in early uh, September, you'll also need to pay that term one tuition fees. So tuition is going to be roughly what you see on the screen here. It may be different depending on your program because it is based on credits per course. Uh, and some courses have, or some programs have different credit amounts than others. 
once you are registered in your courses, that's when your SSC will show you how much your exact tuition is. There's also some additional student fees that you'll need to pay and things like living expenses and stuff like that. Our cost calculator is really a great option to see kind of what all those fees are, how they apply to you. Canadian students should apply for student loans by July 15th at, or sorry, by July 20, 25th at the latest to ensure that you're receiving funding for September. By applying by July 25th, you may also be eligible for the UBC bursary program, which aims to meet unmet financial need as determined by your student loan provider. The bursary application will open via the Student Service Center on August 15th, and it closes on September 15th. Bursaries are money that doesn't need to be repaid as long as you remain in full-time studies for the year. It's usually paid out in December, and again, it's meant to meet any of that financial need that you have that is not met by your student loans. If you are a U.S. student, you should be completing the U.S. loan request form by June 30th. And there are UBC scholarships available for students throughout your time continuing at UBC. You can find out more information on our website, and I also encourage you to check out external scholarships available to both Canadian and international students. Um, anytime that I hear about scholarships that may be applicable to our incoming students, I send those out in our email communications that go out every few weeks or so. Uh, so make sure that you keep an eye on those, but also check out your parents' company. They may work for, work for a company that provides scholarships for their students. Uh, there, you may work for a company that provides scholarships. You may be part of an organization, especially a lot of sports organizations have scholarships every year for students. So really do some searching and check out what you may be eligible for. Um, I do also want to mention that you may be paying for school with personal savings, uh, RESPs, on-campus jobs, things like that. If you are using an RESP, you will likely need a proof of enrollment letter to access those funds. And that is something that your enrollment services advisor can help you with. So your enrollment services advisor will reach out to you sometime in early May to introduce themselves to you if you are already admitted. If you're admitted after then, then they'll reach out usually within a few weeks of you accepting your offer of admission to introduce them to you. And they can help with things like financial planning, tuition, awards, student loans, and you'll have an enrollment services advisor assigned to you throughout your entire time at UBC. All right, so that's kind of based on some of the questions submitted in advance today. I'm now going to jump into kind of what the rest of your degree is going to look like, some things to look forward to in year two and in your upper years. So you'll be joining us in year two, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be missing out on anything. In your academics, you'll be taking courses focused on your specific engineering program. You'll be placed in a program. Uh, for those interested in co-op, co-op applications do open at the beginning of your second year, so keep an eye out for that in late August or early September for the co-op program if that's something you're interested in. Typically, the first work term won't be until the summer after your second year, and applications are also available to students starting their third year. So if you're not sure if you want to do that in second year, um, you can also apply at the start of your third year. Co-op provides paid work experience. It will extend your degree by a year, but it allows you access to some top engineering companies to get paid work experience within your field of engineering. You'll also get to meet lots of other students through your team-based project courses that you'll take no matter what program you're in. So we did talk a little bit about programs and stuff already. So all students who think that they will be admissible and have completed at least 27 credits of the first year curriculum by April 30th should be completing the form, even if you aren't admitted yet. The majority of admissions, as I mentioned, will go out in May or June. So we do encourage you to complete that form by the May 15th deadline. There is no cost to complete the form. You just go online and complete it. Our programs at the Vancouver campus are competitive and your placement will be based on your admission average. However, your personal statement, which is read by your first choice program, can also help to kind of boost your GPA a little bit. Student preference forms are not processed on a first come first serve basis. So submitting a preference form earlier than the deadline does not give you any sort of higher priority in receiving a placement. 
we strongly recommend that you rank all UBC Vancouver engineering programs on your preference form. And do not rank Okanagan programs if you have no intention of possibly relocating. The second year placement uh, will be completed about a week before course registration begins. And again, that will be late June as course registration will be in early July. Now I have just a screenshot of the website. Um, this website is linked if you scroll down just below where you can see me on the screen right now. There are lots of links down there. Do check out all of these different resources. There are some really great options. So if you are looking at um, under like the preparation piece, there's lots of information on there. There's more information about all of the programs if you'd like to further explore. There is tons of great information. There's a video on here you can check out. Um, there's also uh, a chart on here that has the four-year historical averages for each of our programs. So you can see a sense of what those averages have been from students entering each of our 14 programs at the Vancouver campus. So there's really tons of information on this website for you to check out and it'll really give you a lot of great information. When it does come time to register in courses, you will be getting a lot more information. Um, when you go to register, you go to our course registration site, you can click on the browse in the top left hand side and then select STT. From there, you would be selecting the year level that's appropriate to you in the program that you are uh, uh, going to be starting in. It is important that on the top right hand side, you do make sure that it says 2023 winter. Uh, that will not be available for you just yet uh, because those courses are not published yet, but you can look through last year's right now if you want to see what those schedules sort of look like. So this this year that is currently finishing would be 2022 winter. Now when we say winter that refers to our entire year. So September through the end of April is what we consider a winter term and you have term one and term two in winter. Your program will also send you communication and your advisors will give you lots more information before course registration comes around. So you'll have all of this information, but just because we got a lot of questions in advance, I wanted to give you a quick snippet of what that will look like. Now in your STT, you'll see a whole list of courses. You'll have lectures. A lot of those lectures will have a lab or a tutorial or just or a discussion component as well. Um, you'll also, when you look at your courses for your program, see that a lot of those courses are included in your STT, but there may be some as circled here that are not included as part of your STT and you may need to add that into your standard timetable. Again, that information is all going to be shared with you in advance of course registration. I hope that you've already had the chance to talk with some of our design teams here this evening before coming into this session. They get to work on a lot of really amazing projects. We also have a ton of really great clubs that you can join at UBC. There are more than 400 campus-wide clubs. We have more than 30 design teams at the Vancouver campus. We have tons of clubs focused on equity, diversity, inclusion, and indigeneity. So there is really an option for anyone to get involved outside of the classroom. You can find even smaller community within engineering by joining your department club to further your network and connect with other students in your department as well. Now, since all students at UBC Engineering are only joining their department in second year, you'll find a lot of students are feel like they're new to each other, have not met each other before, don't know a lot of people in their classes or in their program. We're coming from a thousand students admitted into the first year program to typically most of our programs have somewhere from like 60 to 150 students in that program. Uh, so you'll be in this very similar situation. You don't have to be worried about being new to campus because a lot of students going into their second year program all feel new. That department club is a great way to get connected, but there's also a ton of events that that department club will put on to really make sure everyone feels welcome. Everything mentioned uh, that is available to you in year two will continue to be available to you in your upper years, but there's also a few additional things that you can get involved in in year three. So year three is typically when students can apply to, to a minor in entrepreneurship, commerce, arts, science, or honors math. You could choose to go abroad through a coordinated international exchange program. Um, and there's just lots of things to get involved in to really expand your degree. So the good news is, is that if you're coming into second year, you can apply to co-op 
Um, but you can also wait until sec till third year to apply to co-op as well. And otherwise, a lot of those other kind of ways to really fulfill your degree are not going to come around until third year. So you have lots of time to still make those decisions of if you want to go abroad, uh, if you want to do a minor, if you want to be in co-op, all of those don't have to happen right away. In year four, all of those design and project-based courses that you've completed throughout your degree will culminate in your capstone project where you'll solve challenging real-world problems proposed by industry partners. Projects are very diverse and could include innovating existing technology or designing something entirely new. If you want to see what some of those projects are all about, you can search UBC Applied Science Design and Innovation uh, online or on YouTube even. There's some videos uh, to check those out. If you happen to be close to the Vancouver campus next week on April 11th from, I think, 2 to 5 p.m., I want to say, is our Design and Innovation Day happening on campus. And a lot of capstone projects will be on display then. So that's also something you could check out. All right, so quick snippet of things that I've mentioned today. Register as soon as your date and time appointment allows you to. Do make sure that you are submitting that placement form uh, by May 15th. Second year registration dates will be July 5th to 7th. And second year placement decisions will be released in late June. What about transfer credit? I know that there were some questions about that. So your first year credit will automatically be assessed by our admissions office. That will show up in your SSC once it's available after you've been admitted. You'll also be contacted in late April or within a few weeks of your offer of admission by an advisor for more details about how to assess your credit um, that you're receiving. There's also a lot of information about transfer credits on the Academic Services website, so I do encourage you to check it out there. Not all of the transfer credit that you have that shows up will show up as UBC engineering equivalent courses. So you may need to work with an advisor to see if your course is actually equivalent to one of our first year courses. And then if there are courses that are still outstanding or that were not assessed for credit that you think should be eligible for credit, you can work with our engineering academic advisors uh, and so you can submit a transfer credit request form, then they can help assess those courses for you. Thank you so much. I hope that that provided you some info about coming into second year at the Vancouver campus. Hopefully I'll see you all soon on campus.